Today, we're going to look at one of the most trendy pieces of wearable biometric technology. And I'm not talking about sleep rings. We're talking about the continuous glucose monitor, or CGMs. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this episode. Okay, so the emergence of CGMs, or continuous glucose monitors, has really been life-changing for many people with diabetes. With these CGMs, people with diabetes can constantly monitor their blood sugar levels and don't have to prick their fingers multiple times a day. Now, this means the pain of poking is gone, but it means that most of my diabetic patients had to check their blood sugars multiple times a day. Most of them didn't, and really relied on really how they felt or whether they were crashing to really know where their blood sugars were. A lot of the times they recognized their crashes, but they didn't recognize when their blood sugar levels were extremely high. And that was really part of the problem with managing these folks. Now with a CGM, most people now recognize them, they've seen them, you might be wearing one even now. This inserts a small needle under the skin that comes with a patch, and you wear this, and it literally measures the amount of glucose in the interstitial space between your cells, and it then sends this information to either a smartphone or sometimes it's a device that you carry with you that updates the trends. Okay, now there are a lot of possible and real benefits for this. First of all, metabolic health. There was a recent study published in Cell Metabolism found that even people without diabetes can experience significant glucose spikes after meals, which can contribute to metabolic disorders over time. What benefit CGM does to these people is you can find the foods that cause these spikes and then make dietary adjustments over time to minimize those spikes. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Weight management. A study in the Journal of Nutrition showed that stable blood sugar levels can help with weight management by reducing cravings and preventing overeating. By tracking glucose responses to different foods, people then could create a personalized diet plan that promotes weight loss, or for that matter, maintenance. Energy levels and moods. Now, as anyone with young children knows, fluctuations in blood sugar levels can affect energy and mood. The sugar tantrums of children are well known. The hyperness of sugar in children is well known. Similarly, the fall in blood sugars causing changes in mood or even affect are extremely well known to diabetics, but also to most lay people who notice these changes. So correlating a CGM with mood Sounds like a good idea. Now, one of the problems with CGMs has been that you needed a prescription to get a CGM. And doctors were supposed to only prescribe them for people with a code of diabetes. Now, that's a problem. You have probably noticed there are a great number of companies that have sprung up with telemedicine, teledocs, who will be more than happy to prescribe off-label a glucose monitor if you subscribe to their program. Now, all that changed a couple of months ago when in March of this year, the FDA approved the first over-the-counter continuous glucose monitor without a prescription. Now, we're waiting for the rollout. I suppose I could tell you who it is. It's the Dexcom Stello. I have no relationship. There is another competing device from a different company that's not yet approved, but probably will be. So what? Well, interestingly enough, insurance plans usually cover about all but 
30 or $40 a month for these continuous glucose monitors. This continuous glucose monitor, when it comes on the market, and we anticipate it actually any day now, will cost about $90 a month over the counter. What does that mean? That's $3 a day. And that's, quite frankly, less than a cup of coffee for this information. So that's really going to change the entire field. So the question is, okay, there's all these benefits. Is it really going to change habits? Or is it worth knowing what happens, for instance, after a meal? I've had uh, Professor Tim Spector from the UK uh, on my program. Uh, Tim is uh, intimately involved with a company called Zoe, a really good company, a weight management company. Uh, I have no interest in that company. Um, but Tim makes a very good point, and I'll second that point. He uses a test meal that is administered to his patients as a telemedicine service that basically looks at not only glucose spikes, but insulin spikes to a test meal. And he loves to tell the story, and I think I, I tell it right, that his wife is incredibly tolerant of carbohydrates. So she can eat this test meal, which quite frankly has a lot of carbohydrates, and basically nothing happens. Her blood sugar doesn't spike, her insulin doesn't spike. He does the exact same meal his blood sugar spikes, his insulin spikes, and that's not fair. But this just one example of eating a test meal now informs him that carbohydrates, at least in the form of his test meal, are pretty mischievous to him, but not to his wife. So they can actually eat very differently. Now, the point I'm making is, once he learned what his response to this test meal, he doesn't need any more continuous glucose monitoring. He knows what's going to happen to him. Same way with his wife. She knows what's going to happen to her. So once that initial test is done, so what? Why is that important? Well, if low carbohydrates or keeping your blood sugar low following a meal, which sounds like a really good idea, is important for long-term health, then we might want to design a study that looked at people who compressed their carbohydrate load to a particular part of the day. For instance, a study was done of eating your carbohydrates quite early in the morning versus eating your carbohydrates quite late in the day at dinner versus eating a Mediterranean style diet and looking at the long-term outcome in blood sugars, in weight management, in insulin resistance, in metabolic syndrome, in pre-diabetes and diabetes, and in humans, and guess what they found? It turns out it made absolutely no difference when you had your high carbohydrate load, whether it was in the morning, whether it was at dinner. But the important thing was, when you didn't worry about that and just ate a Mediterranean diet, the results were exactly the same. Now, uh, Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org uh, has said the same thing, and it's one of a number of things that, interestingly enough, he and I agree about. Uh, he's one of my fiercest critics, but we actually have a lot of points of agreement. And I think this is one of them. Just because you know what's going to spike your blood sugar doesn't mean you have to keep wearing this to kind of fixate on this. I've made a joke that I wear two sleep monitors, uh, an aura ring and a whoop band, which is hiding under here. And I wear them for entertainment value uh, because they totally disagree with each other. And so if, let's say, I really want a lot of deep sleep uh, and the whoop band says I got a lot of deep sleep and the aura band said I didn't, guess who I'm going to believe? 
Uh, on the other hand, if I want to know my REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, and the Aura Band said I got more REM and the Whoop Band said I didn't, guess who I'm going to believe? The Aura Band. My point is, these things are useful up to a point, but like any of these other devices for biohacking, you can get carried away with focusing instantaneously on oh my gosh, my blood sugar went up 20 points and I'm going to die. That's not what's going to happen. So this is a brand new world we're entering. And it's maybe well worth your time to buy it once, track for a month, test which foods are your friends, test which foods are not your friends. But quite frankly, all you got to do is follow the Plant Paradox program like this study showed, and don't worry about it. It will take care of itself. Thanks for watching, but don't go anywhere. The next episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast is waiting for you now. Numerous human studies have confirmed that cinnamon can lower fasting blood sugar levels from anywhere to 10 to 30 percent. Why? Well, it's loaded with polyphenols.